What is the impact of climate change on health? Who's going to be affected? What can we do about it? Stay tuned and find out. Welcome back to this Global Health YouTube channel. It's for people that want to make the world a better, safer, healthier place. If that's you, then please do subscribe. My name is Greg Martin. I'm coming to you from the lovely city of Dublin in Ireland. Before we talk about the effects of climate change on health, there's one or two things I just want to quickly clear up. Is climate change real and is it being caused by human activity? Now, I'm a little distraught at having to address this question at all. It's kind of like asking the question, is the world round? Yes, there are people who believe the world is flat for religious reasons or whatever, but we don't consider that to be a real controversy. The world isn't flat. There is no Easter Bunny. There isn't going to be a follow on Back to the Future Part 4. And yes, climate change is real. And yes, it is caused by human activity. These are facts. They're not going to change unless, of course, they do make a follow on Back to the Future Part 4, in which case, as a man of science, I'm prepared to relinquish my position on that subject. The truth is that the overwhelming majority of climate scientists agree that climate change is real, it's been caused by human activity. The occasional detractor from that position is almost invariably being financed by private sector interests who have a lot to lose by a move to clean energy. In this video, we're going to be talking about the effects of climate change on health in the short term. And the reason I say in the short term is because in the long term, it's very difficult to predict. The long term effects include scenarios in which planet Earth is completely uninhabitable by humans at all. But before we carry on, I just want to say a big thank you to Monash University Nursing and Midwifery for sponsoring this video. Thank you very much. Monash, which is a leading university in Australia, offer a very interesting Masters in Advanced Nursing. This program prepares nurses for leadership roles in clinical nursing, management and education. And they offer a PhD program and that'll give you the skills necessary to produce high quality independent research. And a big thank you to Trish Schwerdel from Monash. She helped me develop the content for this video. Thanks very much, Trish. So click in the link in the description below this video and find out more about their programs. Before we take a look at the direct and the indirect effects of climate change on health, let's just take a moment to quickly understand the seriousness of the problem that we're facing. While climate change at the moment is being driven by increased levels of carbon dioxide, which is a result of fossil fuel burning, we're quickly getting to the point where our use of fossil fuels isn't going to make a difference one way or the next. Now, we haven't gotten to that point yet, which is why it's so important that we act now while we still can. Look, the, the melting of the polar ice caps means that less sunlight is reflected off the ice, which means there's more global warming. And the melting of the permafrost leads to a release of methane, which is a very powerful greenhouse gas, leading to, you've got it, more global warming. And we run the risk of getting to the point where this self-reinforcing cycle of warming that perpetuates warming will lead to out of control runaway climate change. And at that point, there's nothing we can do. Now let's talk about climate change and health. The most obvious consequence of climate change in terms of its effect on health is severe weather events, things like floods, droughts, storms. And these are all set to increase dramatically over the next 20 to 30 years. In fact, we're already beginning to see that increase now. And aside from the immediate physical threat that these severe weather events pose to local populations, there are some interesting and important secondary effects that we need to think about. Firstly, and maybe one of the most important ones, is population displacement, because that brings with it geopolitical instability and possible conflict. Secondly, crop failure, food shortages and associated malnutrition and starvation. And of course, this can worsen the first problem, population displacement. And thirdly, the spread of infectious disease because of a lack of access to clean water. And these secondary effects, by the way, are no joke. Let's just talk for a minute about the geopolitical disruption and possible conflict that can arise. One of the very important precipitants of the ongoing crisis in Syria was the fact that it was preceded by three consecutive severe droughts. These droughts led to food and water shortages and about one and a half million people moving from rural to urban areas. This then led to food price spikes, civil unrest, protests and more. And we've all seen the downward spiral into chaos that the country and region has gone into since then. Now, of course, there were other precipitants of the conflict, but experts in this area agree that the droughts and the population displacement were a major contributing factor. And so while the last half century has been a period of relative peace, and by relative, I mean compared to the first half of last century and the preceding centuries before that, we may well be on the verge of a period of unprecedented geopolitical instability and conflict. And this will be driven by thirst, hunger, starvation, population displacement, overall desperation in a way that we've never seen before. And this will all be happening at a point in human history when we have unprecedented ability to do harm to one another through, for example, the advent of biological weapons. And all of this could be driven by climate change if we don't act now. 
Next, let's talk about infectious disease. As the region of habitability for the Anopheles mosquito increases, and by the way, we're already beginning to see this happen now, the number of people in Africa alone that will be at risk of getting malaria will increase by about 170 million by the year 2030. Currently, unknown pathogens that could emerge from the melting permafrost could cause epidemics and pandemics. Novel zoonotic infections with pandemic potential are already on the increase, and we're seeing this as a result of increased pressure on food resources. And let's be clear, a global pandemic would be catastrophic. Epidemiologists predict that if we were to see a flu pandemic like the one that was in 1917, the Spanish flu, in today's population with population density and increased global travel, it would kill up to half a billion people. That's 500 million people dead. Look, it might sound like I'm trying to be alarmist, and I am. We should be alarmed, we should take this seriously. We cannot put the lives of millions of people at risk for the sake of saving the jobs of a handful of coal miners. Now, is this my roundabout way of saying that Trump shouldn't have pulled out of the Paris Agreement? Absolutely, it is. Trump's lackadaisical attitude toward climate change and towards science in general is reckless. And it comes at a time when what the world really needs is responsible leadership, not kowtowing to interest groups for political expedience. Yes, if you want to get elected, you might want to promise the Earth, but in this case, you really are promising the Earth. You're trading in the habitability of the planet, the only planet that we have, for a handful of votes, and that's disgusting. In the short term, it's going to be the people who made the least contribution to carbon emissions who suffer the most. And in the longer term, the effects of things like pandemics and conflict are going to affect everybody. Now, the good news is, it's not too late. We can do something about this. We can change the way we consume energy. And we can pressure politicians into making responsible decisions that will affect our children and it will affect their children. Now, stay and watch another video, and I'd love to hear what you think about climate change and health. Even if you disagree with me, leave your thoughts in the comment section below. I promise to read and respond to all of them. Subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. And again, a big thank you to Monash University for sponsoring this video. Click on the link in the description below to find out more about their programs.